<laughs> you ready? Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And I know that this is Pee Pee and Peter's Bachelor Weekend, but Boo Radley said that he loves being a movie star, and so he wanted to come on video today. These little guys are running around like crazy. I let them around in the backyard, or let them out in the backyard, and they're chasing each other, and Pee Pee is having so much fun. Yeah, you're having such a good day, aren't you? They're having so much fun. He'll probably go over here. He loves to sit on, when we watch TV, he like, Boo Radley sits over there. And Tucker is sitting right here. Do you wanna come over here too, Tucker? Oh Lord, he's like trying to figure out how to come over here. Hold on a second. This is basically a dog video. Come here, Tucker. Come here, honey. Oh, he just hopped right up. There you are. You wanna be in the video too? Okay, hold on. And there is Tucker. <laughs> He said, I'm starting to get used to this being on uh, TV stuff, Dad. I think I kind of like it. Somebody said he looked like a little goat, and he does, doesn't he, with his new haircut? So anyway, we are having such a good day, aren't we? You having a good day? He said, I'm having a good day, Dad. So anyway, <laughs> there's Boo Radley over there, and Pee Pee is sitting right next to me. And we are having a Pee Pee and Peter's Bachelor Weekend. Don't worry about us. We'll be just fine. And if you didn't know, which you don't know is a lot, I have new candles out, you guys, with the Poor House Candle Company. The first one that I have is called Bachelor Weekend, and um, it is me and Pee Pee, and it's uh, warm chai tea with sweet baked uh, pumpkin. I had this on the candle warmer yesterday, and it smelled up the entire house. I showed it in the vlog, and it's so incredible. And then the other one is my Halloween candle, Peter's Monster Bash, clove, buttercream, spice cake, and vanilla. And it is, you can see I'm a little monster on there. It is so good, you guys. It is so fantastic. So those are linked below. Go check them out. Um, if you buy it from the link below, it's an affiliate code, which means I will make a little bit of money on there. I just want to be honest and transparent about that. So, you ready for the meditations, Tucker? He said, I am ready. Now, P Boo Radley just, is he be he's behind me now, so he's going to start digging for his hole. So, because he likes to make a little hole and then sleep in it, you know. He thinks that he's digging back there. Okay. It's the last day of summer. So, I wanted to return to something, you know, like... I'm somebody that at the end of a season, at the end of a year, at the end of whatever, you know, my sobriety year, my birthday, everything, like I like to look back on the year before and kind of see everything that happened, everything I learned. I like to do an evaluation, you know, inventory. I talk a lot about that over here. I'm getting ready to go have dinner with my sponsor tonight. I'm really excited. And um, I also, you know, like to make some goals and things for the year ahead. Um, but I also like to look back at like the best parts of the past. And one of my favorite things in the last year is, and I know that this is going to sound corny, but is my reading The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty, which is the meditation sister book to um, Codependent No More, which is a book that absolutely changed my life um, profoundly. And I can remember people talking about it, and I thought, this book, it's okay, it's going to be okay, but you know, whatever, like I don't know I really relate to it, I'm not codependent. I didn't know how codependent I really was. And I think many of us are, we just don't like that word. And it's not necessarily a negative word and I didn't really understand that until I read it. And I started taking some of my own power back in my life. And I read it years and years ago and I've read it several times since. And um, you know, it's a fantastic book. I keep copies and I give it to people all the time. But this book I have read so much in the last year and more than any other book on my channel, people will send me pictures on Instagram or tag me in pictures of Instagram that they uh, bought this book to read along. And I haven't read along with this book in quite some time. So I went in here today um, and I looked at the meditations and they're actually quite long from the last couple days. The August 29th, Owning Our Energy is long. Um, August 30th is shorter and then August 31st is like three pages. So I'm going to read August 30th and August 31st. Um, I haven't read these two yet, so I'm going to read them on, I mean, I'm sure I've read them at some point because I've read this meditation book for years. So I thought that we would go back to something old, you know, that we love on this channel. And, um, I know many of you have this book, so you pause it and read along with me. Um, and we're going to talk about these two. August 30th, Accepting Our Best. We don't have to do it any better than we can, ever. Do our best for the moment, then let it go. If we have to redo it, we can do our best in another moment later. We can never do more or better than we are able to do at the moment. We punish ourselves and make ourselves feel crazy by expecting more than our reasonable best for now. Striving for excellence is a positive quality. Striving for perfection is self-defeating. Did someone tell us or expect us to do or give or be more? Did someone always withhold approval? There comes a time when we feel we have done our best. 
When that time comes, let it go. There are days when our best is less than we hoped for. Let those times go too. Start over tomorrow. Work things through until our best becomes better. There is a time for constructive criticism, but if that's all we give ourselves, we'll give up. Empowering and complimenting ourselves will not make us lazy. It will nurture us and enable us to give, do, and be our best. Today, I will, be, I will do my best, then let it go. God, help me uh, stop criticizing myself so I can start appreciating how far I've come. And I, and I love this meditation. You know, um, I, I feel very blessed in that I came from two parents that always told me I did my best, but they didn't BS me either, you know? Um, they weren't like, let's give participation awards, you know? I mean, like, if they thought that I could do better on something, they would be honest with me, and I'm not talking about five or six, okay? I mean, I think there's an age and a time for things, right? You know, if I ran a race in fifth grade, you know, I was field day, whatever, and I came in third, you know, like, they'd be like, oh my God, congratulations. You know, they wouldn't have said, you can do better, you can get first. But as I got older, you know, when it came to grades, or I played tennis, like, and I was looking at playing tennis professionally, I've shared a lot about that, um on my vlog channel and uh you know like they would challenge me and they would say you know we're really proud of what you did but you could have done better you know like and you know are you willing to push yourself they didn't say it in a mean way i never had like you know parents that were managers that kind of thing i always had parents that loved me and supported me and were like just do your best that's all we expect of you you know i really i, I make a joke of my grades in high school but i really really struggled academically you know i had tutors for long periods of time with math like you know it's a joke on my main channel that i say I didn't get my glasses on I can't do math I really believed I was uh, not good at math for quite some time and what I really believe how, what was going on was that you know I would have tutors and teachers that just did not know how to teach math to me geometry algebra whatever in a way that I could understand it and I didn't have somebody that was patient enough to sit down and talk to me in a language that I heard it and I, I think that education is going to change in the next 20 years I think that we will start looking at how people learn instead of what they're learning. And I think some people learn by hearing, and I think some people learn by practicing, and I think some people learn by taking notes, and I think some people learn by, you know, whatever, all different kinds of things. And for me, I learn mostly by listening. Like, I can listen to a song once or twice, and I know all the words to it, you know? Um, most songs, most songs. And that's what I learned when I was in college. I've told this story before with finite math, you know? That, like, I had failed it twice, and that was also during my addiction. And my dad said, Listen, you have to graduate this class. I, you're going to take it one more time, but you have to take it. I don't care. You just need to show up to the class. If you show up to the class and you've done your best, if you take the test and you study for it, you've done your best, right? So I had to meet with the professor, and the professor would call me out every day in class, and he'd be like, Mr. Mon, and it was this huge lecture hall, right? And, um, you know, I had to do all the study classes and all this kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I ended up doing very well in the class, and I, I didn't believe it at first either. I've told this story in my vlog, so I'm not going to repeat it over here because I know a lot of you watch my vlog. But what I really realized was I, I'm not really that bad at things that I think I am. That I am my own, like, sabotage, my own self-saboteur. You know, I sabotage myself. And uh, they said that on RuPaul's Drag Race. And I thought it was a really great episode. You know, what is your self-saboteur, you know? And I believed that. I would tell myself, I'm not good at this. I'm not smart. I'm not good at math. I'm not whatever. When the reality is, I might be a little bit better than I think I am. And if I just try my best, if I honest to God, inside of me, no, I'm trying my best then really that's the best that I can do, right? Like, I mean, I know that sounds corny, but if you truly, truly, truly have tried your best, then what else is there? And there is no such thing as perfect. You know, I think, you know, recovery has really helped me that with that, with the slogan of progress, not perfection. I don't want to use that as an excuse. I don't want to use that I'm progressing in life. I'm never going to be perfect. If I say to myself, oh, I'm never going to be perfect in this, then I'll stop aiming for it. But I don't want to aim for perfection either. It's a fine line in there somewhere, you know? But when I set my goal on perfect, I always fall short. My expectations are way too high for myself and for others when I expect others to do that as well. And it doesn't have to just be with something that we do. It can be like the perfect Christmas, the perfect vacation, you know, the perfect relationship. And then what happens is the vacation falls short. Christmas doesn't meet up to that. You know, the relationship doesn't meet up to that. And then we have resentments because resentments are unfulfilled expectations. When someone or something didn't meet up to how we thought it was supposed to be, then we get into resentment. 
I mean, I've had resentments at Christmas before, you know? I've been super upset or super sad and upset on the 26th of December because I'm like, it's all over. I was all geared up for this great Christmas and it didn't turn out the way that I, have you ever done that? I don't do that anymore, you know? I get excited about what's to come and then I look at it and I go, wow, it was really great because I didn't expect for this to happen, you know? So I think it's a really, you know, important meditation. And it's an important thought for us to not focus on perfection. There is no such thing as perfection. There just isn't, you know. And um, if, if the person out there that wants to believe there's perfection, wants to continue to aim for it, you, you have at it, right, all day long. But I'm not going to spin my wheels aiming for something that I know does not exist. I'm just not, you know. Okay, so because for me it's self-defeating. Like the meditation said, I'm never going to reach it and I'm always going to be down on myself and then I'm going to always be criticizing myself, you know, for something. And um, that's just never going to happen. You know, like, I was telling a friend of mine this the other day. When I was getting my master's degree, um, I did this internship. And it was in this inner city, like, uh, school, right? And there was a team of us. There was, like, ten of us that worked underneath this mentor. And I remember, like, me and this other woman, she, like, we, like, were had to work with the teachers on... Um, attendance and there were a lot of kids that were missing and there were like these this one family and the kids were missing like four to five days a week I remember and so we went to the teacher or the mentor of this program and we said you know we got to get him, get them here every day of the week we got to get them here every day of the week you know or she said to us like what's your goal and I said to get them we said to get them here every day of the week and she looked at us and she goes your goal is way too high and we were like, what? Like, they need to be here. They need to be attending school. She goes, let's work at maybe, you know, like two to three, one to two days a week. Let's start there and then let's build on that, you know? If we get to five days a week, wow, that's amazing. But let's start at one, two, or three days a week and let's see if we can get them here that much, you know? And I remember that lesson because that lesson wasn't just about them. You know, the lesson wasn't just about attendance. The lesson was for me as well. You know, like, let's start off with small achievements and then build on those over time, you know? I'm not great with weight. I mean, I think everybody knows that um, this channel started as a weight loss channel and it's not anymore, you know? But the times in my life that I have lost, lost weight, the times in my life that I am working out and I'm very, very healthy, I cannot believe that Tucker has absolutely, this is so sweet, you guys. He has, I don't know if you can see it, but he has like sat right there the whole, look at him. And Pee Pee's on the other side and Boo Radley's sitting there. They're being so good. But the times in my life that I have lost weight and I have stuck to, you know, uh, a, a healthy lifestyle was when I would take like five pounds at a time. And I'd say, okay, instead of losing 80 pounds, I want to lose five pounds. And I, once I lost five pounds, I'd say, okay, another five pounds. You know, my old sponsor used to say to me, um, you know, like, there's a recovery saying too, I think it's an old joke, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And it's also the same thing, like he would say to me, like, you know, if there's a huge tree in the woods and it falls down, can you carry that tree all by yourself? I'd say, absolutely not. And he'd say, but what if I gave you a chainsaw and you cut the tree up into smaller pieces? Could you carry the tree bit by bit? And I'd say, oh sure, yeah. You know, it's that. And, and that's how we get to where we want to get. It's not about just, you know, achieving things like that and uh, aiming for perfection. It just doesn't exist. And I think for those people that it appears to us do have perfection or they are almost there, I, I think they have a lot of help, a lot of luck, and we're probably not truly seeing their lives as they really are, you know? Okay. And then the last one, do I have enough time, is denial. And it's like three pages. Okay. I've been, this is for today, August 31st, last day of summer, because it's Labor Day weekend. Denial, August 31st. I've been recovering many years. I've used denial many times. It has been a defense, a survival device, a coping behavior, and at times, almost my undoing. It has been both a friend and an enemy. When I was a child, I used denial to protect myself and my family. I protected myself from seeing things too painful to see and feelings too overwhelming to feel. Denial got me safely through many traumatic situations when I had no other resources uh, for survival. The negative aspect of using denial was that I lost touch with myself and my feelings. I became able to participate in harmful situations without even knowing I was hurting. I was able to tolerate a great deal of pain and abuse without the foggiest notion it was abnormal. I learned to participate in my own abuse. Denial protected me from pain, but it also rendered me blind to my feelings, my needs, and, my, um, and myself. It was like a thick blanket that covered and smothered me. Eventually, I began to recover. I had a glimpse of awareness about my pain, my feelings, my behaviors. I began to see myself and the world as we were. 
There was so much denial from my past that had the blanket been entirely ripped from me, I would have died from the shock of exposure. I needed to embrace insights, re remembrances, awarenesses, and healing gently, gradually. So true. Life participated in this process with me. It is a gentle teacher. As I recover, I don't know why that just got real emotional. I love that saying, it is a, life is a gentle teacher. It is, um, as I recovered, I was brought to the incidents and people I needed in order to remind me of what I was still denying, to tell me where I required more healing from my past as I could handle these insights. I still use and break through denial as needed. When the winds of change blow through, upsetting a fam familiar structure and preparing me for the new, I pick up my blanket and hide for a while. Sometimes when someone I love has a problem, I hide under the blanket momentarily. Memories emerge of things denied, memories that need to be remembered, felt, and accepted so I can continue to become healed, strong, and healthy. Sometimes I feel ashamed about how long it takes me to struggle through to acceptance of reality. I feel embarrassed when I find myself again clouded by the fog of denial. That, can you guys see that this, this meditation is like just really hitting me hard? I just think because sometimes, you know, we talk about all of the negatives of denial, but we really never talk about like what character defects actually do for us, that they really guard us against um, pain sometimes, you know, emotional pain in our lives. And um, that denial is one of the biggest ones out there for us, one of the biggest character defects that we only see as negative, but really to some degree, it is also um, like a blanket uh, against pain, I think. Then something happens and I see that I am moving forward. The experience was necessary, connected. Not at all a mistake, but an important part of healing. It's an exciting process, this journey called recovery, but I understand I may sometimes use denial to help me get through the rough spots. I'm also aware that denial is a friend and an enemy. I'm on the alert for danger signs, those cloudy, confused feelings, sluggish energy, feeling compulsive, running too fast or hard, avoiding support mechanisms. I've gained a healthy respect for our need to use denial as a blanket to wrap ourselves in when we become too cold, too cold. It isn't my job. To, I've gained a healthy respect for our need to use denial as a blanket to wrap ourselves in when we become too cold. It isn't my job to run around ripping people's blankets off or shaming others for using the blanket. Wow. Wow. Shaming makes them colder, makes them wrap themselves more tightly in the blanket. Yanking their blanket away is dangerous. They could die of exposure the same way I could have. I've learned the best thing I can do around people who are wrapped in this blanket is to make them feel warm and safe. The warmer and safer they feel, the more able they are to drop their blanket. I don't have to support or encourage their denial. I can be direct. If others are in denial about a particular thing and their activity is harmful to me, I don't have to be around them. I can wish them well and take care of myself. You see, if I stand too long around someone who is harming me, you see, if I stand too long around someone who is harming me, I will inevitably pick up my blanket again. I tend to be attracted to warm people. When I'm around warm people, I don't need to use my blanket. I gained respect for creating warm environments where blankets are not needed, or at least not needed for long. I've gained trust in the way people heal from and deal with life. God, help me be open to and trust the process that is healing me from all I have denied from my past. Help me strive for awareness and acceptance, but also help me practice gentleness and compassion for myself and others. For those times, I have used denial. That meditation, I think, is just so emotional for me because it just encompasses so much of what I've gone through in the last year. The changes I've gone through, the awareness that I have today of my own denial, the denial of others, and that it's not my place to point that out to other people. That I have to always focus back on myself and what I'm doing and what I'm learning. And when lessons are presented to me, they are opportunities for growth. And I have to trust the process and trust the journey. And that meditation was needed for me today as a reminder. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you're having a fantastic Labor Day weekend. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.